This is a Morris bass guitar that belongs to a good friend of mine that I probably haven't seen in over 10 years. And one time I was over at his house and uh, we were drinking some cold snacks after work and playing some guitar and he told me he had a bass upstairs in his closet so I went up and looked at it and this is what he had. It, uh, it's missing some pieces. I, I don't remember the story exactly. I think he said his kids were playing with it and took it apart and lost some pieces. But anyways, I think... Uh, if I remember correctly, I said something like, hey, I could take that home and fix it. You know, as in go on eBay and buy some cheap parts and get it back functional. So we agreed and I took it home, put it in my closet, and uh, sat there until I moved to my new house, which I live at now, it's still in the closet. And uh, next week, and I am going to visit him for the first time in a very long time. And, uh, thought it would be cool to maybe finally put his guitar back together and um, I was originally thinking I'd just take it back to him I don't know if he has any interest in it or even remembers it but um, but then I was like well maybe I should do what I originally planned went on eBay and bought a bunch of cheap parts so let's look at a uh, let's look at its current state okay so first off it's dirty um, that's probably my fault. It looks like it has been repainted, maybe just spray painted. So all the screws are kind of different. And uh, these, one's a flathead, one's a Phillips. The Phillips is stripped and it's been painted over. So obviously it's been painted since, it's, since it was manufactured. It's got a custom wooden bridge, which is really nice. We'll leave that. And uh, it's missing the pit guard. It's missing the tone and volume. It does have the jack, but it's just straight wired to the to the pickup. And here at the other end, you see it's missing a tuning peg. I am not going to, and some pieces on the back of it. Oh, it's missing some screws too. Oh, that's been changed out. Okay, so um, I'm not going to restore it or anything like that. I'm just going to clean it up as you know as easy, as as much as I can just with the quick clean and and then uh bought some parts we're going to at least try to get it functional. So let me go get the parts I bought and we'll take a look at them. Okay, so I didn't do any research or read reviews or anything and determine what the best stuff was. I basically just typed it into eBay and found the first cheap one. So we've got some bass guitar strings. We've got some tuner pegs. We've got a pre-wired pot kit. I see these, these sweet pot handles with the with skulls in them. They're like 3D cast and resin. That's really cool. And could not find any kind of pre-cut pick guards. So I got this cool like pearl looking plastic. Hopefully we can cut that to shape. It's pretty thick. It's like a I don't know. It's over an eighth inch thick. I would think it'd be a lot thinner than that, but that'll be cool. So I'm not exactly sure how we're going to cut that. I'm just kind of thinking make a wooden template and then use a router. But that'll be last. We'll put that back in the bag. So I think right now I just need to kind of remove the strings, remove the tuner pegs that are on there. Start kind of wiping the thing down. I do want to replace the screws. They're all stripped and stuff. But of course I have to go to the store for that. So I think I'm going to kind of do that last also. Because we'll need screws for the pit guard. But for right now, I think uh, go ahead and disassemble and just kind of clean it up and see what we have. I'm not going to spend much time cleaning this, but I do want to get like this uh, tape residue and, and then obviously the dust off. I'm just use the normal suspect. It's got some disinfectant wipes. It's got some some all-purpose cleaner, some alcohol if we need it, but I imagine that would be pretty aggressive for the spray paint and stuff. Of course the toothbrush and paper towels. So I'll just uh, go at that and and uh, look at what we have whenever, whenever I get that finished. As I was cleaning this, I realized that this is kind of held on by the string tension so that's nice that just comes off so we can clean under there 
So I kind of wiped everything down. There's a few places where it has this glue residue or something. It kind of looks like duct tape residue. Uh, it's not coming off just with, with cleaner, so I think it needs some alcohol. But I'm afraid it's going to pull the paint off. So I'm going to flip it over and try it here on the back. It's just a little test patch. Well, it's not pulling the paint off, but I'm not really sure it's pulling the glue off either, but I'll keep working at that. At least I know it won't mess the paint up, so. So the alcohol's not having much of an effect. I don't think it's messing the paint up any, but the, like I said, I think this is, this is a uh, duct tape, and it's like it's so old that it's, it's not like it's sticky, it's, it's turned brittle. I have some adhesive remover, I'm going to spray that on there and let it sit for a little while and see if that can kind of break it down and loosen it up and uh, see if that works any better. So I want to try to clean these chrome pieces up a little bit. I, there's a little bit of rust and pitting. I think a lot of this is probably just overspray from the, when they spray painted this black. But what I typically use is steel wool and some chrome polish. But I can't find any steel wool. So another option is to use aluminum foil and just kind of ball it up and, and use it as, as, as the, the thing to scrub the, the chrome polish around. And I guess the uh, idea is that kind of the steel wool will wear away at the at the rust and maybe the chrome polish has some abrasive in it so it polishes and also maybe takes some of the rust away but the added benefit of using aluminum foil is that it will it's supposed to kind of break off in the in the pitting and fill it in so it kind of masks the pits a little bit um, I don't know how well that works I have used it before it seems like maybe it does that it doesn't uh, seem to prevent the rust from coming back, so it's not good for that. But, um, but anyway, we'll ball up some aluminum foil and rub it on here and see if we can get some of this rust off. It's not bad anyways, but maybe get it a little bit better. Okay, so I've just done this, this kind of half right here. I think you can see it's, it's brought it clean. Like I said, this isn't rust here, but it will take rust off the same way. We'll see with these few spots over here. But, um... But the aluminum is, is not hard enough to really scratch the chrome, but it is hard enough to, to really, you know, clean the surface. So we'll continue with that. So I did end up moving, removing the bridge, make it a little easier to clean and, and, um, and to get better access to this glue right here. You can see this wire right here. It's a ground wire to ground the, the strings. I'm not really sure if it's normally done that way, but uh, it seems a little janky. I'm not going to change it or anything, but, but yes, yeah, so I guess just bolting it to the top presses it on that wire. It was actually stuck down in a groove that had formed over time, which probably prevented it from making a good connection to the back of this. But um, So I kind of broke it loose and moved it to the side a little bit, so at least it won't be down in a groove. So after the goo gone has been sitting on here, this is kind of dissolved. So it kind of comes off easily with this wooden screw. So I'll, I mean this popsicle stick I guess so I'll kind of break all that loose and wipe it off and then uh, do it to the rest of the spots that seem to have the adhesive okay so I got the parts back together chrome cleaned up really nice uh, although you can see there's a little bit of pitting but there's no rust everything cleaned up um, wipe down the guitar as good as I can uh, paints obviously not that great which kind of sucks but but um but yeah, it's, it's clean now, and uh, rust has been removed. So I think now we need to... Focus on this end. So we need to replace these tuning pegs. And uh, looking at them... Looks like they've been replaced a few times before. So those holes don't line up. That's obviously not the one that came on it. These two might be the originals. That one's different too. So we'll remove these and see if we can make the new ones fit. Okay, so I got the old tuners out. See there's a lot of holes back here. There's nothing we can really do about that. The new ones here actually have... Let me pull it out. They actually only have one screw that goes on the back 
and actually sandwiches between the wood. So that's cool. Maybe that'll work better. I'm looking at it. Get it undone. Uh, it does not fit in the hole, so we will need to drill these holes out a little bit, which means that we need to get these out, which I think are pressed in. So I will work on that next. Okay, I have the holes drilled out. I've got these out. These were pretty hard to get out. You see they were pressed in. Um, I tried to pry them out and push them from the back, but I didn't want to mess the wood up any. So what I ended up doing is just getting a half inch drill bit and trying to drill them out. But you can see as I got a little ways into it, they just started spinning. So I just kind of hit each one of them with the drill. They started spinning and they slid right out. So the neck of this was a little over half an inch. And the biggest drill bit I have is half inch. So I drilled them to half inch and I got the Dremel tool and just kind of made the hole bigger until everything fit. So these should be good to go now. We can go ahead and assemble those. Okay, so if you look at these, there's two different types. One of them's one way and one's kind of facing the other way. So obviously two for this side and two for that side. So they'll be symmetrical. I don't think it really matters if they're in right or not, but this one's labeled one. That one says three, that one says four, and that one says four. That doesn't really line up to me because I would think this is string number one, two, three, four. So I would think three and four would be one way and one and two would be the other. I don't even have a two. So what I'm going to do is put these two on this side and these two on that side. Kind of look, don't line at other guitars, and it seems like usually the, the tuning part is offset towards the towards the guitar's body so I'm just gonna go with that I don't see how the slots are necessarily any bigger to take you know the bigger strings or whatever but um anyway I'm just gonna do it like that so it looks like they just kinda go in here and then we do a washer and then we put this one there Screw it down to us tight. Then once we get them all in and lined up, we can put the little screw in the back. Okay, so now they're tightened down. I um, took these screws out right here. They were really rusty, and I just hit them with the wire wheel and the Dremel tool with a little bit of chrome polish. They didn't come back to chrome. They're discolored, but they're not rusty. So I don't know if the chrome's just gone and that's just the steel. But hopefully the chrome polish will at least somewhat prevent them from rusting. And you can see I have the screws on there. And they are, I think, lined up. Okay, so I think we need to move on to back to this side and take care of the lack of knobs. All right, so here's the pot kit I bought. So it already has everything pre-wired. So except for that wire just broke off. Been moving it around too much. Anyway. That one goes in the middle there. You just look online how these are wired. This is just like that. So we'll run the output from the pickup to this pin three right here. All the grounds are attached to the back right here. So we'll also get the ground wire from here, which is a, I believe a shield wire. Let's look at it. And we also need to connect it to that wire that came off the bottom here. Yeah, so that's a shield wire. So that is connected to that wire going to the bridge. So that'll get connected to this ground wire here. And that red wire needs to get reconnected to the middle there for the tone knob. This is the volume knob. And our red wire, we're not going to use this anymore. Actually coming from the pickup, you can see it's a white wire. So that white wire will get connected to pin 3 of the volume pot. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we should minus some strings have a functional guitar. Okay everything's wired up. It was a little tight over here. You see I have the volume pot kind of turned that way because the uh, I guess it's been cut a couple times since it's been worked on and the wire from the pickup was a little short but uh, yeah shorten the wires going to the to the plug since it was since the to the jack since it was so close that's why it was about that long and uh yeah so i think now if we were to put strings on it 
because it would work. Oh, let's put the let's put the knobs on. Yeah, check these things out. It's kind of neat. Let me find the Allen wrench to fit those. Okay, so it's just looks like it's one Allen screw right there. I don't know how fragile these are because I think they're just kind of like a homemade thing. I'm not sure. Somebody makes these on their own or if they're commercial. But it looks like it's just threaded into the epoxy. That's cool. Alright, well that's done. Let's put some strings on this thing. I've never played bass guitar and I don't know anything about it, so I'm going to have to look up how to even string it or how to tune it. But um, I'm going to get that together and then we'll go plug it into the amp and see what it sounds like. Then we still have more stuff to do, obviously. We need to make a, need to cut this plate out somehow. And there's one on the back too. Missing. And I also found right here it's coming delaminated so we need to probably stick some glue under there and clamp it overnight but I want to hear what the thing sounds like you know maybe it doesn't work at all and there's no even reason to continue right now so let me uh, watch a YouTube video or something and string this thing up and then uh, I'll be back okay so I've used my guitar tuner to tune this up and I noticed that E to A, that's really flat right there. But uh, everything else seemed fine, so that, you know that G A, that should be A. Yeah, but that's like A flat when that's E and that's A. So anyway, see they sound pretty different. So I'm not really sure if that's a limitation of my tuner, since it's a guitar tuner and it's a bass, or. Um, or if there's a geometry issue with the guitar, I don't really see a way to adjust it. Seems like um, this strong string would need to be a little longer. But anyways, it is what it is. And um, maybe that's normal, I don't know. So it's tuned the same way as a guitar, so... It, it, I guess it's got a little thumb board here. I guess we're supposed to use that. And it's really unnatural, because I'm used to... But anyways, um, so volume, volume seems to be working. Tone's working. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of subtle, but um, it sounds good other than my. My uh, speaker up there can't handle the, the low notes, but... Next we need to, I guess, make our plastic pick guards, but uh, I'm not going to do that until tomorrow. But what I am going to do is go ahead and glue up this, where the, it's coming unlaminated. So, um, we'll get on that, and tomorrow we'll try to make us some pick guards. Turn back up. You hear this? You can see it. The 
the tone knob, I don't know if you can see it, the tone knob. All right, well, the next day turned into a few days later, but let's go ahead and get this thing done. So everything's working good. I'm happy with how everything is now. Uh, so it has gone so far. So um, we need to make pit guard. I think I'll start with the one on the back, just because it's a little smaller. And I've never actually done this before, so let's see what I actually got. Came in a big old uh, static bag. So here it is, it's like a sheet of, I don't know, it's cool, it's like a pearl looking thing. So I'm not really sure how to do this. What I'm going to do is uh, probably cut it with the table saw. And then um, I think I'll make a template out of some uh, plywood and then use the router table and go around and try to put a little chamfer on it. So uh, that's the plan. I'll have to get some some paper or something and trace this out real quick and then uh, we'll go from there. I want to put a chamfer on the edge of this, but the only chamfer bit I have is this one, which has the bearing at the pointy end, which means that I'm actually going to have to run this upside down. So this has a protective plastic film on it, so I'm hoping that'll stop it from getting scratched up as it slides on the table. So that'll be an experiment, and hopefully that works out, and so we'll do that to the other one. Alright, well I had a 50-50 shot at it, and I chamfered the wrong edge. So this is the top. This is the bottom. See, top's backwards. So this is the top, and I chamfered the bottom edge. So I'm going to put it on here like this, so I can chamfer the correct edge. And I'll just uh, chamfer it a little deeper, and then, and then sand the pointy edge flat, and uh, it'll just be a little bit smaller than planned for. But that's why I did the bottom one first. So you can figure out what kind of mistakes we're going to make, so hopefully we won't make them on the top one. You know, we got lucky there, because I don't even think that that side has plastic on it. That is the better looking side. Well, cool, let's go see if it fits. Okay, so the two things I got from this is, one side's actually intended to be up. It's sparklier, this side doesn't have sparkles. And this is the only side with protected plastic. So it's important to make this, this the upside so it doesn't... So you can mask any scratches, or avoid scratching the surface but um then of course the other side is is when you do the chamfer make sure you have the upside up so both of those obviously could have been avoided by um paying more attention but it's easy to make mistakes when you're out there so i'm glad i did the back piece first so hopefully we won't make those mistakes on the front one so let's screw this down 
I'm not sure if we need to make the holes big or anything. I just kind of guessed. Because I was outside, I didn't have a screw with me. And these may be too long. We may need to drill into the guitar a little more. Okay, so definitely need to make those holes bigger. And let's see if this will screw down. Alright, I think that one's fine. I just need to drill these holes a little larger. So let me do that real quick. Everything else looks good. So I drilled the holes out bigger and screwed it on. All the holes lined up so I was accurate enough just by putting the little black dot where the holes were. So all that looks good. And the chamfer turned out alright. So I think I'm just going to do the same thing on the top. And this should pretty much be done. So let me go do that and I'm going to do the same thing so I'm not going to videotape it. And I'll bring it back when it's finished. Okay, so I got the second one done. It's uh fits okay. So I didn't make the mistakes I made last time, but I think I could have been a little more accurate. But um let's See if it fits okay. I think the holes line up fine. So, I'll screw it down. Okay, so that completes the project. I wish I had more time. I would probably paint the body. I think it'd make it look a lot nicer. I don't know if I mentioned some things before. All the little chip spots that had like gray chips, I touched them up with some um, some paint just so it wouldn't be gray. I mean, you can still see that where the spots are, but it looks better. And um, up top, I don't know if you noticed before, the, the Morris was was kind of scraped off in places and I kind of touched it up with a paint marker. I don't know if I did it any justice, but at least it says Morris again. So, Anyways, that's all I'm going to do to that. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get it back functional and working. And um, it's now Wednesday and I'm leaving Friday at lunchtime. So pretty much don't have time to do anything else to it anyways. So I'm going to put it in my car and uh, take it to take it to my buddy on the trip this weekend and and see what he thinks hopefully he uh he likes it if i guess uh worst case it'll be kind of funny that i still have it after all this time so anyways thanks for watching